guys, so the, what's the verdict? Brake pads are pretty worn down. It looks like it's almost metal to metal. Really? Mm-hmm. That bad, huh? Yep. Just recently, I did not record it, but I had to replace uh, this uh, air spring helper. As you can be seen, the other one is all discolored. It's the old one. Lasted us probably a couple of years. But what happened on, uh, to this one, so on the way up when it was compressing after uh, axle dropping, it caught the top of it, pinched it, and uh, created a tear. So it wasn't holding up the air, but it was a simple replacement. Everything, all the hoses still in place so didn't take much to um to repair that i'd also recommend breaking the leader screw while the caliper is still on because leader I, screw okay yes. point it out because when i go back with the new pads i'm going to need to push the plunger in and i open up the bleeder screw and get the fluid out that way instead of pushing it back into the abs because it gets dirty fluid in there. Mitch just got off the phone. The star of our <laughs> previous, pre film. previous video is coming. <laughs> the great Bobby. <laughs> He's not going to like what we're, we're filming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick the camera right in his face. <laughs> All right, so the caliper is out. This oh. is this is the pads. Let's see how much was left. Well, you had not some. too bad. Not as, not as bad as I thought it was. And that's why I wasn't too concerned, but there's what we still have to. Percent there left. Yeah, but we still have to get the parking uh, brake going. Well, I have put a new set of tires. I used to run Mickey Thompson's Baja Claw, and. Uh, it might just be me because I was stubborn and kept uh, trying to balance it utilizing active balancing everything from the uh, BB shots to what else did we use Mitch antifreeze, antifreeze 1540 uh, all kinds of stuff and basically destroyed the tire they got badly capped and uh, I sold it for like $50 to to the guy out here locally and I got uh, the set of uh, Ta Taiwanese made no wait Thailandian made uh, tires uh, what's the name of it gosh I forgot um, so it's uh, let's see Thunderer track grip mud rains I have about 10,000 miles on those tires and they seems to be wearing uh, pretty pretty good. It, I wouldn't say it was very easy to balance it at the shop. Uh, the guys were kind of reluctant to conventionally balancing. They were suggesting um, they were suggesting to me after I kept my uh, Mickey Thompson's active balancing, but I insisted on uh, on the weights and it took uh, quite a bit of it as it can be seen here on this particular time. Uh, Mitch, mm -hmm. I think it would be easier. There is uh, little holes here. Yeah, they're rusty and I don't feel like tapping them. Okay, so oh, wow. this is... You know what? I, I think not, I, I think you wasted your time. I did. I don't have shoes. That's what I'm saying. I think we'll, you have to put it back together and uh, we'll have to dig into it again. Order those parts. And you know what? I didn't realize it was a drum on, on top of a brake. The worst Shoes. thing, the worst thing is that I actually knew it because last time I was, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I had it open up and I completely forgot about the uh, shoes. Oh well. I don't even remember if no, Napa did have shoes and I thought it was just for a different model or something. And that's, that's, <laughs> I'm ready to kick myself. That's the worst thing because I've, I've, I dug into it and I knew about it. I just didn't think about it at all. 
Well, you can put the new shoes anyway. Yeah. It shouldn't take uh, too long, at least. Uh, that's the reason it came out pretty e pretty easy this time. I'm talking about the disc. Last time I had a heck of yes, oh, the rotor yes. Uh, I had a ha heck of a time to dislodging it. I remember. You do? Mm -hmm. So you seen those shoes before too then? Look in my eyes, boy. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember the shoes. I remember fighting with the holes. Here I'm feeling all guilty. And he's seen it too and uh, looked at Napa, looked at the shoes and didn't get them. Good job, Mitch. Good job. I might have had to leave early. That's why. <laughs> of course, we are so skillful to make excuses for ourselves. That's why these came out. You put NACs. You don't want NACs on these. You want Loctite. Uh, I guess I am uh, the easy kind of guy, no. except not in this application. It should be. With you. So you were pretty surprised how easy they came out? Yeah, one of them almost was loose. Uh oh. So well, you want to clean that'd it before be our putting star it back? at the at the door. Or oh, door. here's the star from the previous video. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> How are you? So, Mitch, do you want to clean it before you're gonna put it back? Clean what? Clean all that uh, anti seize. We're gonna be going back into it. I'll just tighten it up. All right, I had to step away while I was away. Mitch is done with the left one, so we'll continue on the right one for anybody who will find it useful uh, to have a little bit of a procedure on the whole brake, rear brake um, servicing. So once again, first step will be to remove the two bolts that hold the cal caliper, get it out of the way, remove the old pads, put the new pads, and Mitch is loosening the bleeder valve. Four. Huh? Four. To get the fluid out when you're pressing the piston back in. Otherwise. The, the old pads are th thinner, the new ones are thicker, so they're not going to fit easily, so it has to be, uh, some of the pressure from the system has to be relieved, so you don't struggle too much putting the new pads on the, um, on the disc. Well, it's pretty uh, caked in there, huh? Mm-hmm. Mitch is trying to loosen it up to get it to budge. Without stripping, hopefully. It's pretty close right there. Do you want to spray some of the penetrating oil? Not yet. When there is a will, there is a way, huh, Mitch? Mm-hmm. 
we're in good shape and this should be pretty easy because smart me have used <laughs> anti-seize on the bolts that I shouldn't hey it's holding up pretty good yeah you didn't put anti-seize on these I'm pretty sure if I put that, them on the other side that and I forgot to put it on off I've been tightening <laughs> okay <laughs> That will explain it. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go like butter now, huh? Then on reassembly, you always grease these pins up with disc brake grease, which tends to handle heat a little bit better. Preventing them from seizing? Yeah. Yeah, those times you hit the brakes and brakes lock up, it's because of those locking up most of the time. Or more wear on one side compared to the other. Mm -hmm. Here are the pads. And uh, seems like same thing, conditions are not too terrible. But that's with my driving since quite a bit of driving will be done by Mitch on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I can hot ride. You'll be there too. <clears throat> Comes with a new hardware too. Yep. So it's basically uh, replacing the old clips with the new ones in the same pa pattern. Pretty much. So for someone, what would you suggest for someone who's doing it for the first time? Do they need to memorize? Is there a specific pattern or just pretty straightforward? Um, are they all the same or depending depending on all the top, same. bottom, right to left? They're all the same, but they pretty much all go into their own spot. And of course, if you get it to where you don't, you don't bend the tab the wrong way. Those tabs are not very uh, Other side straightforward, went on. huh? Other side went on just fine. I think it got smushed by the the pads. Oh, during the ship it, shipping? There we go. Now these little things, I didn't take off, so I'm not putting them on because I don't know where they go. So they must be for a different application. Could be. of the kit but it's not applicable here so I know what you're doing it now but explain it uh, for um. the first timers pushing the piston in so I can get the shoes on. Before I knew this trick, it would take me forever to get them on. So you're basically compressing the piston to widen the gap uh, for the caliper, to squeeze the caliper back to the new pads. Then I'm opening the bleeder valve to extinguish the fluid I'm pushing back. Yeah, there will be some of the pressure there. Instead of pushing it back to the ABS module. Mm-hmm. How much uh, would you say about a quarter of an inch is generally enough to press it? Yeah. Hey, we need to start converting to the metric system. So quarter of an inch is what, about six millimeters? About. Mm. 
What kind of grease is that? This one happens to be air brake, air brake grease assembly. Um, is it advisable or is there a better product that can be used for that? They make actual disc brake grease. But this should be sufficient enough. So pretty much uh, that's job done. Basically tightening the two balls holding the caliper. Um, brakes don't have to be bleed because there was a little bit of a liquid that squeezed out just to relieve the pressure and put the caliper on new pads. Putting the wheel back on and that's about it. So until the next video. One, one more tip. Uh, handling those big meats like we have a 35 inch tire plus Hutchinson uh, beadlocked wheels. A lot easier to just put a shovel, especially a good quality old-fashioned Ford's shovels uh, to lift it instead of struggling with all that weight. And they are a to. Anyway, until next time.